Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Today I have Abraham with me. How yeah. you doing, Abraham? Good, good. Good. And as you can see, we are in a different place. Mm -hmm. uh, pre the previous place we couldn't stay in. So we are here. It's going to be echoey. We have nothing on the background. And it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. All good, man. We can handle it. Well, I guess that can be one of my New Year's resolutions since we are actually talking about that today. Um, but since it's coming to the end of the year, um, you do have this culture and perspective in regards to I'm not I'm not satisfied with my current life. Um, I want that to be changed and I want to set new rules in my life. Yeah, yeah. And people are starting to catch on to it because they're like, hold on a sec, you're doing this. You're starting in January, you get into February, mm. and 99% of your goals are already, you know, behind you. Mm -hmm. You failed them, mm -hmm. and you're long, no longer interested in them. Yeah. So we, I want to talk about that, you know, persevering through our goals. But at the same time, I want to speak about how we can wisely choose our goals. Because often, most of our goals are selfish. Yeah. Okay? Um, as Christians, we need to have Christ-centered goals, mm. right? The, the way we live our life is Christ-centered, um, with, with a Christ-centered mindset, we, we like to put Christ ahead of everything else. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to new resolutions, often I see as Christians, we don't put that into perspective. Right. We just be like, oh, yeah, what's what's this world interested in what's the current culture interested in therefore i'll have similar goals to that mm. so maybe we can start with that yeah definitely having christ-centered goals it's actually i think that's that's a an important aspect of it because one of the things with the whole resolution thing especially in the new year because pretty much this week, when we come into the first week of January, almost, oh, I think maybe like 70, 80% of pastors are going to be preaching on the pulp about your New Year's goals. Yeah. Right. And one of the things was that tended to be more of a secular thing, right? This whole idea of, all right, we're in a new year. So now let's, uh, you know, let's look at your goals and let's try to be your best you this year. Right. So the first things you talk about, you know, your diet your health, you know, try and lose weight, maybe get a better job, educate yourself so that you can progress, you can improve yourself and be your best you, you this year. Mm. So that was a fairly secular thing. But then the Christians kind of adopted it because there's kind of this like relationship between uh, prosperity, right? With the whole prosperity gospel, this prosperity, this whole new year thing, um, but it's not just the the new year. They do this in general. Um, the prosperity gospel looks at how you can thrive in a more secular way um, as a believer. You know, as a Christian, you can still be as prosperous as you possibly want to. You know, the sky's the limit. You have to just dream big. And you have to pretty much, they use the whole, you know, by faith thing. So, if you just have enough faith and you work hard, you're going to thrive and you're going to prosper. And so they kind of adopt that same principle that a lot of the, you know, the secular wisdom looks at with the new year, new me thing. Um, so I think there's a danger in adopting that kind of mentality. But in saying that, I think there's a, there's wisdom in, look, let's look at our spiritual goals. This is something we should be doing throughout the year. Anyway, so it's not like we come to the start of the year and then we're like, oh, um, you know, well, people come to like November and like, you know what, this year is a write off. So let me just, I'll, maybe I'll start reading my Bible in January, right? Or I'll start praying in January. Well, you should do it right now. Like if you're in November, start now. You know, you right. don't have to wait for the clock to tick. You know? so, so you're basically saying that God doesn't take holiday through Christmas. Yeah, pretty much, you know. That we got to <laughs> daily pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Yeah. And not, not that the reading the word or praying is a cross, but no, in no. the sense that um, as Christians, we, we shouldn't have that mindset that once I get to this certain event mm -hmm. or a date or a then holiday, can start. Yeah, then, then can I can start. do something yeah. for the Lord yeah. or then I can improve my spiritual life. Yeah. So it's, yeah, 
it's kind of like when you say you want to start a diet next week, like, oh, it's, it's the that, weekend. So I'm going to be, and then, yeah. and then Monday I'll start <laughs> the diet and I'll start eating. Right. And then Monday comes, you're like, oh, maybe I'll wait till Tuesday. It just, it never comes. Right. Yeah. Um, which is why a lot of people from a psychological, psychological perspective, like, all right, January 1st, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to be disciplined. Yeah. If you haven't been, I mean, you guys did an episode, you and Emil on discipline, right? So, you know, if you don't start discipline, it's like a process, right? It's not like all of a sudden January 1st comes and you're going to be a disciplined human being. Yeah. There's a process here. You've got to develop it. It's like a running a marathon. You've got to get acclimated to it. So when we talk about spiritual goals and being spiritually minded, that's a discipline. That's something that it takes it takes time. It takes um, a process of, you know, being sanctified and, and gaining an appetite for the Lord, you know, thirsting yeah. and hungering for righteousness in that sense. So um, there's a danger because a lot of Christians are like, oh, from January 1st, I'm going to go through and read the whole Bible in one year. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> you know, sit down for an hour with God and just pray. Mm. Right. I mean, to do that in the beginning, it's like someone who's morbidly obese saying, I'm going to run a marathon. Yeah. You know, like tomorrow so oh, i wouldn't uh, say that personally <laughs> so i know my limitations <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing so yeah. people people are like all right january 1st i'm going to do all these spiritually disciplined things but they haven't been practicing for a long time they haven't gained and you know have acclimated to the conditions so setting realistic goals spiritually but at the same time being like even if you fail here and there in your Bible reading, in your discipline, keep going at it. Keep keep working through it. And I think that's where we should probably go more in line of um, in this episode, talking about what your spiritual goals are. Not mainly the emphasis of, you know, this new year, new me thing, but I want to get closer to God. That's our goal, yeah. right? So obviously we've established that often our goals can be very selfish, can be yeah, very carnal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and look, there's nothing wrong with, um, I don't know, if you want to lose weight or if you want to read a book a week yeah, or no, no. W whatever the case is. But that should not be the forefront mm. of what you want to achieve next year. Yeah. What should be the forefront of your mind is how can I glorify Christ exactly. in my walk with him, in my personal relationship, and also in my ministry. Mm. Um, you don't have to be an elder. You don't have to have a certain position in the church to serve God. No. You could do it every single day. You don't even have to wait to Sunday. Yeah. Sharing the gospel with a co-worker, that's a ministry. Exactly. Serving a co-worker, that's a ministry. So there are a lot of ways that God can use you in your everyday life to mm. serve him. So this whole mindset that um, I can't serve God or I can't minister because I'm not an elder or a pastor in a Sunday yeah. um, Sunday church, that's that's not a that's not a biblical no, mindset. No, no, no. The 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 body of Christ is a body. Every mm. member of the body has an important function. And so people generally look at the elders and the leaders of a church, and that's the higher end there. But um, everyone is vital, every member of the church. And so even if you're not a leader per se in the church, you have a vital function in being an ambassador for Christ and ministering for him. But in saying what you were saying about um, the glory of God being that the chief anchor, like that, that's where the intention that that's what should be the foundation of any spiritual goal we have. But one of the things that tends to happen, I mean, we have pride and we have ego. And so a lot of the spiritual goals sometimes actually have a fleshly motivation to it. So there are a lot of Christians like, oh, I want to go get, you know, my bachelor's or master's degree in theology, right? Nothing wrong with it to educate yourself in theology and, but sometimes the motivation is actually fleshly mm. because it's about getting gaining that head knowledge maybe being able yeah. to argue your way a bit better through some concepts against you know some other people um yeah. so yeah. i think this is one of the things that the people that are listening to us they like hold on you're saying that this might not be beneficial but at the same time you're saying there's nothing wrong with it and you mm. keep on repeating yourself what we're trying to say that God has a will for you in your life. Mm. 
And sometimes the intentions of doing what you are doing, even though it might seem right and yeah. innocent, yeah. it can come with an evil heart, right? Or can be corrupted and, by yeah. the certain desires of the heart. You've got Judas. He he came to Jesus. He saw this lady pour out this perfume on Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. Which was worth a lot of money. Yeah. And his response was like, why couldn't we sell it and feed the poor? Yeah. Now, that might seem the right thing to say. Yeah, it seems spiritual. Yes. It seems like a pious thing to say. But then we know that the Bible shows us something that is deeper beyond those words, what was in his heart. Yeah. He was the person that was dealing with the finances in mm -hmm. Jesus' ministry. He was the treasurer. And often he would steal from that money. So sometimes people can have an innocent thought mm -hmm. but you have to remember is that a godly biblical exactly. thought exactly. and how can it glorify my master my christ mm -hmm. in it yeah it, it's one of the interesting things i remember when we were ministering um a few years back and we had a lot of the younger guys that were you know seeking guidance and a lot of them were like oh we want to go to bible college or seminary and we want to i'm like oh cool why do you want to do that what's the purpose um, and then you'd question them for a few more minutes and then you'd start to realize you're not going there because you want to glorify God you're going there because you want to kind of become esteemed yourself right mm -hmm. you want to gain a position right in the face of people rather than with God right mm -hmm. because we know that your master's degree or your bachelor's degree or your seminary training is not what makes you a pastor or a leader or an elder what makes you a pastor or leader or elder? It's the ordina ordination of God, right? It's that God has chosen you. And so we kind of have one of those things where we're like, all right, what's the intention? If you were, if there is a pure intention in your heart, I want to go, I want to do these spiritual things, especially the new year coming. I want to do these spiritual things because I want to glorify God. Beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. That's where it should be. And, and that kind of connects to a previous point that we've spoken about that often we set a lot of goals mm -hmm. and we kind of really forget about them at the end of January yeah. or February. By January 15th. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be an interesting idea is that how about those selfish goals have the tendency to vanish very quickly mm -hmm. while applying spiritual goals in your life often lasts longer. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could that be maybe an effect where you say if, if someone is, ha, has the perspective of glorifying God and, and wanting to put God at the forefront mm -hmm. and saying, God, not only this year, obviously the beginning of this year and, and all of it is going to be yours, but every other single year, yeah. my life, as I walk with you, I will glorify you. I think that would last longer, not because you're making a different decision, but yeah. rather that this decision can be aided and helped by the Holy Spirit. And you're not putting like a yearly time limit on it, like yeah. right, January 1 to to January 1st to December, right? Mm -hmm. You're not being like, all right, this is where it's at here. No, you're looking at the whole scope of your life, that my life is to be serving God in service of him and his kingdom, right? Yeah. So you're like, I'm not where I was yesterday. I'm better, but I still have a lot to improve. And I know God is the one who's leading me in that way. He's the good shepherd. He's the one who's, um, you know, he's the one who's sustaining me. So one of the things that we'll, I wanted to kind of mention about this whole new year's resolution and the goals thing is a lot of it, it has to be workspace because they're usually physical things, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to really work hard. You've got to discipline yourself really hard. The good thing with spiritual practice is it is based on the strength and the working of the spirit in you. It's not you doing it. Remember what Paul said, no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Yeah. Right? So any good thing you are doing, it's the motivation, it's the working, it's the spirit of God in you that is working these things out, right? So it's actually faith-based. So as long as, you know, you, we look in Habakkuk and you look in Romans 1, where it says the just shall live by faith. So it's still based on faith. 
Um, and so your belief in Christ, your your hope, your looking to Him is what gets you through um, to become a spiritually disciplined person and to accomplish those goals that you have, that we should all have as believers. Yeah. Right? So it, it should be an eye opening for every Christian that if you are setting up spiritual goals mm -hmm. um, and it's being led by the Holy Spirit, it's being yeah. led by God, then God is working in yeah. you He'll and He will accomplish it in yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, that's a blessing. Yeah. So I, I guess that would be the difference between how we view sanctification and yeah. New Year goals. Exactly. Imagine exactly. if yeah. we actually viewed sanctification or if we actually lived their sanctifications, mm. the way we set up our goals in January. Yeah. Right. Saying, God, I want this sin out of my life. I want this bad habit mm. out of my life. I want these bad friends out of my life, you know? And then a day later or two later, they're like all back exactly. in your life. Yeah, yeah. And like, oh, I'll just wait for next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for next January to, to yeah. pick up this fight. Yeah. But we can see that Paul in Romans 7, he speaks about mm. this constant fight, this constant struggle yeah, yeah. between yeah. The, the mind and the, and the flesh and how they are just opposing each other mm -hmm. and how often, even though he knows what the wrong thing is, his, his flesh. Yeah, yes, yeah, his yeah. flesh still takes advantage of him, and he still falls into those temptations. Yeah. Yeah. But then, in the next chapter, it speaks about the authority mm. of the spirit in our exactly. lives, exactly, exactly, and yeah. how by the spirit we live in righteousness. And not only do we live in righteousness, we have this connection with Christ that we call Him our Father, mm -hmm. uh, with God. Yeah. Yeah. Galatians, it says the spirit of Christ calls him our father. Yeah. And the removal yeah. of condemnation because of that fact. Like you, there is no there is no condemnation, even if there's certain failures because of the flesh. Mm. It's the spirit that's strengthening you and leading you into that improvement mm. and that progress, spiritually speaking. That's a beautiful thing. And I, like I was, I was preaching on Romans 7 a few weeks ago at church. And we were talking about the fact that, you know, we tend to look at, what you were just saying about calling God Abba Father. I mean, do you do that in the flesh? Is that is that a work of the flesh that calls you out to cry out Abba Father? No. It's the it's the work of Christ and the Spirit of God in you that brings you to this place of authority and saying, I can boldly come to God and call him my father. So the same faith that justifies you is the same faith that is sanctifying you as well. And so it's just that constant belief in what Christ has done that is getting you from point A, where you were a sinner, you're saved by grace, and now you're going point B, point C, point D in your sanctification. Yeah. yeah? So like it's like we really need to cling to the faith that we read here in the scriptures. Yeah. I, I mean, we don't want to be like what you see in Hebrews 5 at the mm -hmm. end of the chapter. Speaking is like, now you should be teachers. Yeah, exactly. No, no. <laughs> but you still no, can't no. or you still babies. Yeah, yeah. Because um, the writer obviously saw that there was no improvement in people's mm. lives. And they were obviously having a perspective of sanctifications the way you would see today someone who have a, has a perspective of a New Year's goals. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's like I'll start in January. Most likely, it's not going to work out, but mm. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, and then next year and next year and next year after that, they're in the same place. Mm -hmm. But in Christianity, in the New Testament, especially, Christ wants to walk with us. Yeah, and that walk is always forward. Right, Amen. there will be setbacks, but that that yeah. walk is still forward. Yeah. And if we are always stuck in the same place you might see yourself having the same um, the same attitude of the Israelites mm. in, in the wilderness, yeah. where, uh, where God always called them stiff-necked people, yeah. never changing, miracle after miracle, victory after victory. Mm. They were still in doubt. They were still living a, a sinful life. Yeah. That's why he says, be holy, for I am holy. Yeah. That's something yeah. that that can touch with what you said that by the spirit of God, we call God our father. Mm. You got to be like your father Holy. You know, to, to, to be a, a son that reflects his image. Mm -hmm. And if God is holy, 
Therefore, we need to live a holy life. Yeah. So it's very important if we are approaching this New Year's resolution or goals or whatever it is that you have, you have in mind. If Christ is not part of it, mm. um, even if it's successful, let's say you want to drop away, be in the best shape of your life, and you achieve that by the end of next year, what does that yeah. matter yeah. in God's eyes? If you're, not, yeah, if you're not doing that to glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, you are, if you are healthy, but you've lost your soul, what does it yeah. matter? If you are wealthier, right? You're rich, you've achieved your financial goals, but you don't have Christ. What does it matter? Mm. That's why the point is, especially if you are a Christian and you've experienced the blessings, you've tasted and seen the goodness of God in your life and say, yeah, next year is going to be about me. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you've missed something yeah, you've there. You've missed the point. You have missed something there. So that's why we're encouraging you to Put your trust in God, focus on spiritual things, mm -hmm. because I like how Paul speaks about spiritual things are unseen, yeah. physical That's, things yeah, yeah, yeah. are seen. Spiritual things are eternal. What you see here is temporary. temporary, will perish. Now, great. We really wish you all the health. Mm -hmm. We wish you better finances in your life so you can provide for yourself, for your family, and, and serve others with it, it's great. But if God is not in that, mm. I'm sorry, it's it's all in vain. It's, yeah, it's like a, the psalm, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. Yeah. And that's, I think that's like a perfect analogy, a perfect illustration of, you know, we talk about the new year, but in general, your life in general in Christ, you are building a house. I mean, First Corinthians talks about this, where you're, there's a foundation yeah. there and you're building a house and whether you're building with hay, straw, wood, or whether you're building with gold, whether you're building with something that through fire will be sustained and will, you will not be damaged. Can, can I read yeah, that? Yeah, I was literally it. going to that. Well, yeah, yeah. Like-minded. Like-minded. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can start with verse 11. I mean, you can start with verse five if, if yeah. you ever want to read the passage. Uh, first Corinthians three eleven. for no other foundation can um, anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, uh, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear, mm -hmm. for the day will declare it, uh, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work, of what sort it will be. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a bit too far from me. I'm trying to see it. If anyone works which has built on it in jaws, he will receive a reward. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through the fire. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea that you've got these precious metals, right? These things can enjoy the fire mm -hmm. and can be refined by fire but you've got straw, hay, and wood, mm -hmm. they get burned out by the fire. Yeah. Now, the beauty of it here, Paul's saying that those who pass by the fire and their works pass by the fire, they get rewarded they get by rewarded. it. Yeah. But those who pass by the fire, but their works are burned, mm -hmm. they only themselves will be, will saved. be saved. So there's a distinction here between being saved, so what was, you know, yeah. was being saved and this process of sanctification and your obedience to God in your saved life, yeah. leading to greater reward, how you build your ministry, how you build your family, how you build relationships with people, how you testify to the truth of God. These are things that you're being obedient to, mm -hmm. to the word of God, to the spirit of God that reaps reward. If the intention is to glorify God and it's yeah. for his glory and his kingdom. Um, and so this is why there's going to be a lot of people who've started massive ministries and it's all going to be burnt by fire on the day of judgment because they've done it to glorify themselves, yeah. to make a name for themselves, like Nebuchadnezzar. Or even yeah. even building a whole empire. Mm -hmm. or, or, 
of whatever it is. It could yeah, be yeah. a company, it could be a nation, families, a <laughs> it could be na nations, as you said. But I like how he, um, Second Peter chapter 3, he ends it. He says that the earth and all of its works will be melted on it, melted like right? Works. Will be perished. Mm. So are you building works in your life that you could look at and be like, that's an eternal mm. investment? Mm -hmm. Or could it be something that you like, it might give me a moment of joy, but this will perish and it might even take away my soul with it. Yeah. Because there are a lot of things that we set as goals. They are just leading us into a temptation to walk yeah. away from God. Um, I, I was I was going to just touch on one thing. We were talking about the whole unseen and seen thing as well. One of the reasons why, especially men, like they struggle with the spiritual things because they don't see a physical result immediately. Like, so when you're trying to lose weight, right, you step on the scales day by day, week by week, and you see progress, right? Yeah. So I like, see well, myself getting bigger and bigger. So that's progress. <laughs> <laughs> Bulking, bulking season for the last 20 years. Um, Since I was born. <laughs> but the thing with the spiritual is often it's a lot harder to measure it through the lens of the flesh, right? Mm. You're, the only way to measure spiritual progress is through the Spirit of God, right? And also it's through the way that you're loving people, the way that you're loving God. And so there's an unseen aspect to it mm. that eventually as time goes on, other people will see you, you're different, man. Something's different here. Like yeah. you're a lot more gracious. You're a lot more patient. You're a lot more loving. Like what's going on, right? Yeah. And then you talk about, well, I've been really, you know, working, you know, on getting closer to God and God living through me and being being an ambassador for the kingdom, right? Um, but that takes time. It's not like you're going to see that progress physically straight away. Yeah. Um, so so it's like that endurance, that persevering yeah. in faith to a, a later goal. You know? Yeah. I've also noticed that, you know, like a group of friends, um, you know, everyone's doing their own things. You know, they, they have their own personal relationship with God. But then when they deal with a problem as a group, you start to notice who, who who's had, the more spiritual who's <laughs> being more, who has improved and become more mature in their faith yeah, yeah. and who still has that same mindset mm. uh, previously. So that's something very important. We are coming to the end of it. Yep, yep. What would be your one advice? We did give you yeah, advices, yeah, yeah. right? Um, have spiritual goals, set up these things, let it glorify mm -hmm. God and so let on. Let the foundation be Christ, yeah. yeah. Amen to that. Do you have one more thing to say to our brothers and sisters yeah. that are thinking, okay, there is a new year coming, right? Every day is the same, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, sunrise, sunset, but there's a new year coming. Um, what advice would you give? Honestly, like my... Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, before we go there, um, one advice actually to the young men and one advice to the young women. Oh. I'm going to make it more difficult make for it, you. Okay. End of you the know, year. Now, now <laughs> I'll be like, my wife's going to be like, why would you give that advice to the women? <laughs> um, pretty much one piece of advice that can go for both is look at the next year through eternity's eye, through mm. the eye of eternity, like we, we read in 1 Corinthians, where we're talking about what how you're building your life. But, you know, we talked about this in biblical masculine, but in biblical masculinity, there's a, a difference between the way men are wired and the way women are wired, right? Um, the end goal should be the same for both men and women that we should be seeking to glorify God. Um, for men, have a resolve to, to glorify God in your masculinity and for women to have a resolve to glorify God in your femininity. And, and in both cases, for the men, um, that you would look at being a man that is seeking to lead, is seeking to to look at the leadership of Christ. Not not the it's not the red pill kind of leading. It's the the shepherd servant heart, right? So you're shepherding in grace and in love and in kindness, and you're leading. And for women to be to be the helper that Eve was called to be, you know, not a snare to the if you're married to the man in your life or if you're unmarried to develop yourself into that godly woman that proverbs 31 um talks about so having having those things in the new year you're looking at eternity 
um, the lens of eternity. Having that in the back of your mind can really help to kind of iron out where I want to be in my life. Not just in next year, but in general, I think. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. Um, I'll give a simple one. Um, and that goes for both because I gave him the hard one. Yeah. Um, just, um, I would say don't be discouraged or don't be defeated by the current culture, right? Because often we, we see the culture on the big scale mm. and we feel like so small and yeah. we think that we can't make a difference. If the spirit lives in you, who can be against you? Mm. The spirit can achieve his will through you if you totally surrender to him. Mm. And I believe instead of sitting there and thinking, well, there's this problem in our culture and there's this problem in our churches and there's this problem in a certain, like Middle East now currently or certain other countries, what can I do? Yeah. Or what can yeah. what is God doing today? Because a lot of people are calling, what is God doing today? Uh, it's it's a shame we didn't learn from the Bible. He's from those, <laughs> yeah, from from those who actually questioned what God is doing at their time. And mm. God really humbled them, saying, This is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. I'm turning this. It looks broken, it looks like it can't be repaired, but I'm changing everything. Mm. And if God can heal, He can heal anyone. And that includes you and me. So I'm just encouraging you don't be outweighed by what we see today, mm. by the culture. Yeah. Just focus on God's calling in your life. And let that be spiritual. Focus on spiritual things first. And everything else, let it be secondary. Amen. You, you want to get healthy? You, you want to get a better job? Great. Great. Good on you. Let that be secondary. Let God be first. Seek the kingdom of God first. Everything else will be provided for Amen. you. I was going to say that one. Yeah. There you that's, go. that's a perfect way. There you go. Perfect way to end it. All right. God bless you. Happy New Year, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Take care.